So I'm currently working on this BMW and one of the jobs that was recently done is it had a oil change. An oil change on these vehicles has a service interval of every 30,000 kilometers. As you can see up here, it now is registering in 28,000 Ks, it will need to have an oil change done again. Now in this video, I wanted to share some information that a lot of people aren't aware of. Where do they get that 30,000k interval? Is it new technology? Is it a case that cars have just become so efficient that you don't need to change oil as often? Or are there other considerations that you should be aware of, especially when your vehicle is outside of warranty? <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I'll say is this is my professional experience and seeing real world faults occur on vehicles as they age. That is also what I do on my own vehicle. So how I service my own cars, I am sharing the information with you. This isn't trying to get vehicles into my workshop or uh, give mechanics more work. Absolutely not. This is just professional um, experience on what actually happens and where they come up with this. The first thing I want to share is a, a training course I went on many, many years ago. It was to do with the ZF transmission. So the ZF transmission is in um, pretty much nearly all uh, automatic BMWs that I'm aware. And they have six speed, eight speed, etc. This is the eight speed transmission here, which is widely um, accepted as one of the best transmissions on the market. Super smooth, very reliable. And uh, BMW advised that the uh, fluid is lifetime. So you don't have to do any servicing on the auto transmission fluid on this. What people aren't aware of is ZF, who makes the actual transmission, advises that you should. So you have a manufacturer of the transmission saying you do need to service it. We advise that you should. And then you have a um, BMW dealer who you buy it from telling you, no, nope, you don't have to do anything with it. It's absolutely fine. We've got you. Now, where do they come up with these guides? Where do they come up with the uh, stretched intervals? Well, it's quite simple. When they are putting together service schedule maintenance for people to view, they can look up the service costs over the life of the vehicle and they can make a decision whether the service costs are high or low and it can really affect whether they purchase that vehicle or not. The manufacturers are making very calculated decisions on how long those issues are likely to occur and whether all of their warranty will be done and dusted by the time any issues arise. They have loads of information on ZF transmissions so they can make a decision to go for the life of our warranty we're going to be reasonably safe and we may only see, see a minor amount of issues. Put that into consideration versus how many vehicles they will sell because of that service interval uh, change. And then you have a huge difference in how many sales you will have. You get a fleet company making a decision on how many of their sales reps are going to be put into one of their vehicles based on service costs versus their comp competitors they will make a decision solely on price. They're not gonna be talking about uh, what the vehicle is like in 10 years time. They're gonna be talking about what it's gonna be like in the first three to five years while they're running it commercially, while they're doing a lot of miles, and they will make a decision based on that. The ZF transmission, is in loads of different vehicles and manufacturers have come out with different intervals across all of those. So you can go into one make and model, has the exact same transmission, they could tell you you need to change it every 100,000 Ks, do a service on it. You have BMW saying lifetime and then you have ZF potentially saying every 80,000 Ks, I believe it is, when they advise that you do the service on it. What you're getting from that is all different manufacturers making their own decisions on what they think is going to boost their own sales. It is the exact same for the engine oil changes. They are making a decision to try and sell vehicles. And I understood this a long time ago when I was dealing with a Ford. So Ford Transit came out, commercial customer looking to purchase. They were looking at service costs one to another one uh, make a model of vehicle to another and they had landed on Ford Transit because of their service interval costs. 
I was asked my opinion, personal problems, what did I experience, etc., etc., and I gave that all to the customer. What I found out was Ford had revised on their new transits at the time a service schedule interval of every 50,000 kilometers. And now what I'm showing on screen is the legitimate documents that was out there to showcase that they advised 50,000 K intervals are fine for changing oil on that vehicle. Now has any major advancements in the oil or the filtration or anything happened between when that was released and the years before that? The answer was no. While oils have got better, filtration systems have got better, technology has certainly advanced, it has not advanced to that level. It cannot. You're talking about engines that could potentially have in, let's say one of these, a diesel particular filter. When you have a diesel particular filter, you have regeneration that's happening in the background. Regeneration can add to oil dilution, which can really affect the lubrication of your oil. It can actually increase levels of oil as well. You can get washed down through the cylinders. Now imagine having that happening and then going 20, 30, 40,000 Ks longer than when you would typically, in years gone by, replace that oil. How is that oil going to look? How is it going to feel? Well, I can tell you, it's going to feel very, very thin. It's going to feel um, diesel-y. It's going to be extremely dirty when it comes out. And what I have seen uh, over the years is the uh, stretched intervals and how they affect engines. Looking at, looking at vehicles here, you can see collapsing oil filters. I've seen that. I've seen so much debris build up in sumps. I've seen rocker covers when I remove them be completely sludged up, full of deposits all over them. And that's just because they have left the oil and the servicing so long in between that it causes all this build up over time. Now again, that may not affect you straight away, but if you are planning on purchasing a vehicle outside of the manufacturer's warranty, so if you're looking at purchasing a vehicle secondhand, maybe it has a little bit left, maybe it's completely out of warranty, you want to strongly consider the service history on that vehicle. You want to see when should those items be done and have they been done. If they haven't and you're buying one of these, I would strongly advise getting the service done straight away, getting the transmission service done straight away, and giving yourself the best chance to have problem-free motoring. You have time and chains on these vehicles. You have all of these moving mechanical parts. You have variable valve timing, and all, any deposits that build up in oil that circulating around, going into these small mesh filters, going into um, strainer pickups from the sump and collecting in there, sometimes hardening, sometimes the deposits get so hard that you actually have to do a very, very extensive clean to get them off. And you're then having to deal with all the consequences of oil starvation, sludging, timing issues, timing failure issues, guides not being lubricated correctly, the problems and the list of issues can go on and on and on. Now one thing to consider, if you are a DIY enthusiast, you have one of these German vehicles, the oil filter is on the top. We have a massive under tray full of different clips, screws on the bottom. It can be a real pain to try and do that in your uh, workshop or your garage or your driveway at home. You could consider getting one of those um, uh, evacuators, the oil extractors. They suck out the oil from the dipstick and they do a, a hell of a job. They're very, very good. They leave minimal amount of oil on the bottom of the sump. I have checked before on my own vehicles that I've used it on. And if you get the, um, the correct seal, the right tubes, all the way down to the bottom of the sump, you can get nearly all of the oil out, except very, very minimal. Then you can change the oil filter under the bonnet, on the top, fill it up, and you're good to go. A very cheap service that you're doing at home by yourself, and you will save yourself potential fortune in repairs down the road. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.